hi beautiful people and welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome my name is another and i make faith related and medical related videos in today's video i'm going to be talking about the different study styles that i had as a medical student right through to the time when i was an intern doctor and if that is something that you are interested in then please do stick around without wasting much more time let's get straight into the video For those of you that may not know, I am an intern doctor. An intern doctor is a doctor that is practicing in that two-year period after you have graduated medical school, meaning that you are seeing patients, you are um, getting paid, you are working, but you are practicing on a temporary license. And then after those two years, that's when you are given a permanent license. So yeah, I am an intern doctor and I am about to finish my internship. I am about one and a half years through my internship and i'm going to be finishing it very soon so yeah that is basically what i am i'm going to start talking about the different study styles that i have had as i have progressed starting with the time when i was a medical student as a medical student i think you studied the most um you have the most energy and you have the most time which is a little bit funny to say because many medical students are trying to adjust to like the workload and the class schedule and everything of medical school that they feel like they don't have enough time but as a medical student trust me you have enough time um you study the most in depth and that is my biggest advice to all medical students study to understand study in depth because everything that you're going to learn after your medical student is going to be learned in addition to the foundation that you have set in medical school so study to understand always ask why something is why the body behaves as it does why does it go wrong like this why does it happen in that specific way in that way i really able to understand for example if you really understand your physiology in depth pathophysiology is going to be a breeze because you're able to really understand the principles of how the body operates during this time period i would suggest that you get a study buddy someone who you're able to study with if you're like me and you prefer studying alone that is perfectly fine but if you're able to or if you desire to get a study buddy answer as many questions as you can there are a lot of books whether it is clinical questions from internal medicine obs and gynae surgery or it is basics questions um, from anatomy physiology biochemistry there are so many books that offer questions and i would highly suggest that you get as many books as you can and answer as many questions as you can during this period for the sake of understanding when i was a medical student i used to use the three pass method and that means that i would go through the same information three times the day that i receive it whether i get it from class or from a slide or whatever it is that i am studying i would go through that information and understand it and then at the end of the week i would go through all the information that i have accumulated for that whole week and then after two weeks sometimes after a month but i prefer two weeks because it's less time i'll repeat and go through all the information that i have accumulated for the past two weeks so you find that i was reading the same thing three times and because i was repeating it it was able to really stick into my mind and for me to remember essentially what i read my biggest advice to medical students is that you have to study continuously because it is so easy to fall behind in medical school like i said the workload is crazy it is insane and if you are not careful you will fall behind it is so easy to fall behind in medical school so try your best to study each and every day the second study style that I have is the one that I used to use during exam period and this one differs with the time when I was just generally a medical student, um, everyday medical student life rather, because it is the harshest period that you are going to study. You are going to study for hours on end, um, you are going to study a huge amount of knowledge in such a short time. My biggest advice for this period is that one, study any time and every time of the day. For me personally, I love to study in the morning. I wake up earlier, study all the way through 12 and then start my day at 12. Study at any time of the day. Number two, if you're able to get a group, get a study group. It helps so much. Um, you can choose a study group where you guys actively ask questions, you have discussions, you exchange knowledge, or you can choose a study group where you guys study individually but then you're just together to create a study atmosphere the second type is the one that i loved with my friends in medical school we would accumulate at someone's apartment and then everyone would be on their own table studying but then it would just be an atmosphere of studying to encourage each other maybe if you want to take a short nap you'll tell someone oh i'm about to take a nap wake me up after two hours you know and you had that accountability so whichever works for you do what works for you but just have motivation if you need it of a study group 
other tips that I have are do pass papers. This is a standard. I'm sure everyone knows that. Do pass as many pass papers as you can. And number four, use flashcards. Flashcards were my saving grace um, during exam period. So what I would do is during the semester, I would make in flashcards with everything that I learned. And then when the exam period came, I would use those flashcards to study. And um, you can use physical flashcards where you actually write it out or you can use Anki. Anki is the app that I used to use. It is so good with flashcards and you can just use that to study. You can make them during the semester and when the, the exam period comes, you can use that to study. The method that I used to use for studying during the exam period is the timed block method in which I would start studying at a specific time and every study session would last 45 minutes and I would take a 15 minute break. So I would do that continuously for four hours and then after those four hours I would take a break. So you find that I would start at eight, um, 45 minutes, 15 minute break, 45 minutes, 15 minute break and I would do that for four hours. 12, I'll take a one hour break and just rejuvenate, relax my mind, maybe watch something and then at 13 I would go back until 17 and then again take a one hour break and then at 18 I would go back until 21 and that really really does help me, it really helped me during my exam period. I do like to emphasize that study method because that really helped me during my exam period but if you have something that works for you then go ahead and do that. So the third study style that I had was when I was a pre-intern uh, before I started working after I graduated medical school but before I started working in the hospital. So just as a disclaimer for me during the pre-intern period I did take a one year off to go and pursue other studies and then I came back and started practicing one year later. But the period I'm talking about is after I came back and I was preparing for my licensing exam and in that period my studying was more clinical than textbook meaning that I was at the hospital constantly. I was there perfecting the skills that I learned as a medical student. I was blessed enough to have doctors that were patient with me as a medical student. So they taught me everything. They taught me how to cannulate, how to do a femoral tap, how to set an NGT, how to do a lumbar puncture. I learned all that when I was still a student. I was really blessed with really good doctors. And when I was in that pre-intern year, when I was in that pre-intern period, I was basically just perfecting those skills. And then I was also analyzing how how doctors see patients, how they come to a diagnosis, how they manage patients, how they take a history, how they do a physical examination because I knew that that was going to be me within the next few months. So that was my method of studying in that period. I was at the hospital for hours and end. In this time period, I would advise that you find a doctor that is patient enough with you, that is willing to teach you things from scratch if you don't know anything, um, if you need to be taught how to catheterize, if you need to be taught how to um, draw blood, anything small, just make sure that you find a doctor that has a heart to be patient with you and has a heart to teach you during this period because majority of the learning and the studying that you're going to be doing is more clinical than textbook. Um, make sure that also when you're in the hospital as you are learning, you're able to match what you see to what you read in the textbook. Don't just learn um, the clinical practice and forget about everything that you learned in the textbook. But make sure that you are going back and forth. And every time you finish um, being at the hospital every day, go back and study what you saw at the hospital so that it may stick um, even longer because you have actually had a taste of it in the physical form. So the last style of studying that I'm going to talk about is the one that I had to adopt as an intern doctor. I wish someone told me that as an intern doctor you never really go back to basics. Um, that is why I say like when you do your basics, know your basics in depth, understand them in depth because when you're an intern doctor you don't really study the way you used to study when you were a medical student. The majority of what you do as an intern doctor is additional learning. You just add on to what is already there. So you find that if your foundation is quirky, you are going to be very stressed when it comes to studying as an intern doctor. But if your foundation is good, then you will learn even more because you have a good foundation. Majority of the studying that happens as an intern doctor, number one, is verbal. When you're in the hospital and maybe you see a patient with your senior, your registrar or your consultant and they say something in passing or you ask a question and they teach you something and it's very verbal they just um throw out the knowledge that they have and it is up to you to catch it if you're the one who asks the question even better because that means you are learning actively so it is up to you to catch the information that is going out in a major word round so that is the way you learn as an intern it is very verbal and if you're smart enough you will make a note of it write it down and then go home and study it more in depth the second way that you learn as an intern doctor is through patient presentation. Um, let's say, for example, you read about Mary Joseph lymph nodes in the textbook and you 
you never knew what they are and then you go into the hospital into the surgical department and you find a patient with them it it stays in your mind more because you have actively seen it and the next time you find a patient with the same condition you're able to remember because of the clinical experience that you have and so that is the second way that you learn as an intern doctor that is patient presentation what they show you the signs the symptoms that they have and um, they stick with you because they're able to recognize them more readily the next time you see another patient the third way that you learn as an intern doctor is through reading articles and research of other clinicians. So that means that there are fellow doctors who share what they experience, their treatment plans, their management plans, what worked for them, what didn't work for them, and they're able to share that online. And when you read that, you learn more and accumulate more knowledge academic for academic purposes that you're able to apply into the treatment of your personal patients. So those are the ways that you usually learn as an intern doctor. Although you will go back to the textbooks, it's very rare that you go back for um, cramming studying but rather go back for revision all right guys so that is the end of the video i hope you did enjoy this video if you did please go ahead and give it a thumbs up comment down below any study methods that you have learned or accumulated in whichever stage that you are at on the medical journey from medical student and your consultant comment down below what you have learned and i would love to hear from all of you thank you so much for watching this video bye